Hello and welcome back to DocuFlix. With an area of more than 500,000 square miles encompassing China and Mongolia, the Gobi Desert is the biggest desert in Asia. This chilly desert area is renowned for its ferocious heat, unusual animals, and enormous sand dunes. Unfortunately, this ostensibly barren area is quickly intruding toward towns and farms, with disastrous effects on millions of people. Fertile lands can become progressively dry and unproductive through the process of desertification, which is often brought on by human activity, climate change, or both. Rapid urbanization, industrialization, and agricultural growth in China have all exacerbated the issue. With over 30% of the country's land area affected by the phenomena, desertification is a major issue for China. This procedure turns formerly productive and fertile land into arid, barren terrain, posing a significant threat to the ecosystem, agriculture, and human livelihood. As the rate of desertification grows, so do the reasons for worry for China. However, China has officially made the environment a priority by making multiple changes to stop the desertification process. In today's episode, we delve into how China's incredible efforts to combat desertification, particularly in the Gobi Desert, have shocked the entire world. If you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to stay updated on our latest adventures. Let's dive in. So, what's driving the increase in desertification in China? The answer lies in a combination of natural and human factors, which we will now explore in more detail. Unsuitable land use practices are human activities that negatively impact the environment and contribute to land degradation and desertification. These practices often involve the exploitation of natural resources without considering the long-term consequences for ecosystems, soil, health, and biodiversity. Let's delve deeper into some of the primary unsuitable land use practices affecting China and other regions worldwide. One thing that most people will probably not connect with deforestation is chopsticks. The common instrument used in East Asian cooking, chopsticks have a surprisingly large environmental impact. Every year, China produces billions of disposable chopsticks to meet the rising demand from both domestic and foreign markets. But how does making chopsticks affect China's deforestation? Let's investigate this less well-known association. Large-scale logging results from the enormous demand for disposable chopsticks, which fuels deforestation. While being a quick-growing and renewable resource, bamboo can still cause habitat loss and soil erosion when it is over-harvested. As a result of their significant use in the production of chopsticks, slow-growing tree species like poplar and birch pose an even greater threat to forest resources. This is only the beginning of the issue, as cities become more dependent on food production, more and more land is used for cattle ranching in China. The fact that most of this farming is unregulated has resulted in issues like overgrazing. Overgrazing by cattle farmers effectively renders the ground infertile, making agricultural land that may once have been used for production unusable. The expansion of the cattle business in China has increased grazing pressures, especially in delicate grassland ecosystems, which only further increases the rate of desertification. This combination with other factors has only accelerated the rate of deforestation, which has several harmful effects on the ecosystem, such as it leads to loss of critical habitats for countless plant and animal species, disrupts the natural water cycle, contributes to climate change, and increases the risk of natural disasters like flooding and landslides. In China, rapid industrialization, urbanization, and agricultural expansion have all contributed to the problem. But fear not, for China has embarked on a remarkable journey to halt and reverse the desertification of the Gobi. The first of these, and perhaps the most remarkable, is the Great Green Wall. The Great Green Wall, also known as the Three North Shelter Belt Program, was launched in the late 1970s as a response to the rapid desertification affecting northern China. The primary objective of the long-term project is to create a vast forest belt stretching over 2,800 miles from east to west, covering 11 provinces and regions. By halting the southward expansion of the Gobi Desert and other desertified areas, the Great Wall aims to protect vital ecosystems, farmlands, and human settlements. 
The Great Green Wall is an immense innovative plan, spanning over four decades and encompassing the planting of billions of trees. The project is divided into several phases to complete the forest belt by 2050. With millions of acres of trees planted so far, the initiative is making significant strides towards its goal. Selecting the right tree species and planting techniques is also crucial to the success of the Great Green Wall. Native species such as the drought-resistant Chinese pine, poplar, and shrubs like sea buckthorn have been chosen for their adaptability to harsh desert conditions. Moreover, innovative planting techniques, including aerial seeding and the use of sand barriers, have been employed to improve survival rates and accelerate the reforestation process. The Great Green Wall offers numerous environmental benefits. As the newly established forests mature, they help to stabilize the soil, reduce wind erosion, and enhance local microclimates by retaining moisture. Additionally, these green belts serve as carbon sinks, absorbing significant amounts of carbon dioxide and contributing to climate change mitigation efforts. The Chinese government has made other significant investments besides the Great Green Wall. Together with the Green Wall, they have made significant investments in sustaining farming practices. One of these methods is crop rotation. Crop rotation is a crucial sustainable farming technique that includes switching up the crops that are grown in a specific region over time. This method enhances soil fertility, lessens the accumulation of pests and illnesses, and aids in preventing soil erosion. This means farmers can preserve a healthy balance in the soil and lower the danger of land degradation by diversifying their crops. Another method that is being used in China is agroforestry. This strategy not only gives farmers extra revenue streams, but also helps to conserve soil and carbon sequestration. Farmers may build more resilient and fruitful landscapes that are better prepared to weather the difficulties presented by desertification by introducing trees into their agricultural systems. Finally, we cannot discuss sustainable farming without mentioning conservation tillage. Conservation tillage is a farming method that keeps a protective layer of the crop remains on the soil surface while minimizing soil disturbance. This method aids in improving soil structure, moisture retention, and soil erosion reduction. Chinese farmers may encourage healthier soils and stop additional land degradation by implementing conservation tillage techniques. Along with this heavy investment in the Green Wall, the Chinese government has placed a great emphasis in battling the problem of deforestation. Local communities are at the front lines in the battle against desertification, and their involvement is crucial for the long-term success of any conservation initiative. China is building a sense of ownership and responsibility that benefits both the people and the environment by integrating locals into decision-making processes and equipping them with the information and tools to stop desertification. An important component of local community participation in China's anti-desertification measures is participatory tree planting campaigns. These efforts include farmers and locals in intensive reforestation projects, which not only aid in restoring degraded lands, but also provide participants with a sense of satisfaction and success. China is giving people the skills they need to protect the environment and way of life by educating them about sustainable farming methods, water conservation, and ecosystem restoration. The community's dedication to protecting its environment is made more enduring by this instruction. The role of ecotourism, which the Chinese government has attempted to promote throughout the years, is the last on our list, but certainly not the least. Visitors to the Gobi Desert have a singular opportunity to engage with nature, discover the area's rich cultural legacy, and support preservation of this amazing ecosystem through ecotourism. Ecotourism contributes to the protection of the vulnerable ecosystem and local communities in the Gobi Desert by offering an alternative to more harmful business and encouraging sustainable behaviors. To continue their way of life while protecting the environment, the local communities in the Gobi Desert have also embraced ecotourism. Visitors can responsibly explore the Gobi Desert's natural beauty and rich cultural history through community-based initiatives like eco-lodges and guided excursions. Additionally, these programs contribute crucial funding for conservation efforts and raise environmental awareness among residents and visitors. 
Ecotourism has the ability to influence good change for local populations and conservation as it continues to expand the Gobi Desert. Ecotourism may assist in securing the preservation of the distinctive ecosystems and cultural legacy of the Gobi Desert for present and future generations to value and enjoy by encouraging responsible tourism practices and aiding community-led efforts. Through these policies, China has experienced great growth and success. Examples of effective reforestation include the Sahanba Forest Farm, which is situated in the Henbei province in northern China. During the 1960s, the dedicated work of numerous generations of foresters turned this area from a dry wasteland into a lush green haven. The UN Champions of the Earth Award was given to Sai Hanba, which now extends over 93,000 hectares, for its outstanding contribution to forest restoration and the reduction of climate change. Let's not forget that the 640,000 square kilometers of loose plateau in northern central China historically suffered from severe soil erosion, desertification and deforestation. However, a significant restoration effort started in the 1990s has produced a striking improvement. Through terracing, reforestation and the implementation of sustainable agricultural practices, the Loose Plateau has become a fertile and productive region, improving the livelihood of millions of people while enhancing the biodiversity and ecosystem health. These inspiring success stories from China demonstrate that with determination, innovation and collaboration, it is possible to reverse environmental degradation and promote a greener, more sustainable future. As we learn from these remarkable examples, we're reminded of the power of collective action to preserve our planet's precious resources and biodiversity. Thank you for joining us on this journey through China's forest conservation. Be sure to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more incredible stories. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.